Hello, my name's Mark and I am GK Tutor. I'm here with Practical Machinist to introduce my new series of videos. So over the next 12 videos, we're going to be programming this part on a CNC lathe using G-code. So in this first video, we're going to take a look at the work and drawing and lay out how we're going to machine our part. So before we start any programming at all, it's always best to work out how we're going to machine this and what order of processes we're going to use and what tooling we might need while we're doing this. Okay, so this time I've decided to go for an Imperial drawing. So we're going to make this part in Imperial. And we've got a few features here that's not fully marked out on the drawing. Now, if we take a look at the uh, 30 degree angle on this main taper here, we can see that there is no dimension for the end point of that. So that's something we were going to need to calculate. And the same as the back 45 degree angle, the 564th angle at the back there, we've not got a diameter, but we do know the angle and we do know the depth. So we can work out the start point of that diameter when we come to bore that uh, angle in the back on we, when we do the second op part. Okay, so let's start off by looking at the first process. Now, we're gonna start off by rough turning this and then follow in with a finish turn. Now, we don't always need to finish turn after the rough turn. If we have very small thin walls between internal diameters and external, or maybe we got some high tolerance internal work going on there, I would leave the finish and turn till after we do those features because we take a very small amount off when we're finished turning, it puts a lot less stress on the part, and it would probably help us with any deflections with the material bending, etc. And also if our part is very long, then I would maybe um, do the finish and turn later on after we've done other features too. But in this case, there's loads of material there, there's loads of meat between those internal parts and the external profiles there. So we can safely do the finish and turn as a second op after the rough turn. After the finish turn, I'll probably go in and do the grooves. I think we've got two grooves there. We've got one at 0.1 of an inch at the end of the thread as a lead out to the thread to make sure the mating part screws up nice and tight to the beginning of that taper there. And we also have that larger groove, um, the 0.156 of an inch groove further down the, the shaft there. So um, we can do this with the same tool. I would say we're gonna use a 0.1 tool to do both of them. And the first groove behind the thread, I'll probably do with a geo one point to point move and then maybe use a grooving cycle for the larger groove. So when it comes to the threads, we have a 9 16 BSW there, that's British Standard Whitworth. So we're gonna to need to look at some thread data there to see the sort of depths we need to achieve. And we'll probably use a carbide thread tip for this. So it adds the radiuses um, on the crest and the troughs of that thread there. So by using a carbide specialized thread turning tool, we can add those rads on. If we're using a single point tool, it doesn't add those radiuses for us. Okay, so that's the thread. So we're gonna be doing each one of these in its own lesson, programming from start to finish with G-code. And as we go through, I'm gonna explain every single G-code I use, M3, M code, and all the other ways we could approach this. Because there's always more than one way to approach a program. Quite often in engineering, everything is black and white, but when it comes to programming, the same as all computer programming, there is many ways to achieve the same thing. And some are better, some are worse, some doesn't make any difference. So we're going to look at all the different ways we can program this as we go through. So the next op after our thread, I'm gonna start doing some internal work there. So we're gonna start off by center drilling for that quarter hole there. So once we've center drilled, then we can go through and start peck drilling that quarter of an inch hole. Now that quarter of an inch hole is two inches deep. So we're going to be peck drilling that. So otherwise that drill is gonna bind up with the material there. And the material we're cutting this time is aluminium, and that has a tendency to bind up if we're not using high pressurized coolant, maybe through drill coolant for this operation because it is quite a deep hole. We wanna blow that swarf out there. We don't want that aluminium mounting on our drill tip, causing all sorts of problems for us. So when it comes to drilling that deep hole, we're going to peck drill that, and I'll be teaching you how to write the peck drill cycle to, to achieve that. Okay, so once our quarter of an inch hole is drilled through the center, it's, there's no tight tolerances on that quarter hole. Um, so we can just use a drill for this. We don't need to ream it or bore it. 
So once that drill is hold is complete, then we're going to part off. So once the part has been removed from its stock material, we can then reverse it and face off the other end. So when we come to doing the other end, we're going to be gripping on that point 364 diameter there, and then we're going to be facing that off and start working on the back uh, features, such as that bore and chamfer. So for the bore, I think I'm going to use a U-drill for this one. Now U-drills are very solid drills, they don't need center drills, and we can also offset them to rough bore with them also. So we're going to be doing that operation when we come to U-drill that large um, 0.787 feature there. With our part u drilled, we're then going to go in with a boring bar and finish bore that uh, surface and that diameter to get a nice surface finish. And that way we can be a slightly more accurate than the u drill um, with the boring technique there. So we can make sure we can nail that diameter spot on by using a, a boring bar. And we've got also machine that back chamfer there with the boring bar too. That's 564 by 45. So with all of that done, that's going to cover us for about 10 to 12 lessons. And we're also going to look at the maths once we get to um, the rough turn. Now, I'm going to go over it quickly now, but I'm going to redo it again on the rough turn lesson in depth. So we're going to need to do a little bit of maths, a little bit of trigonometry to work out the end point of that taper there. So the way we're going to do that is we know that taper is 0.7 of an inch long by 30 degrees. So we can draw a triangle here and work out what this length is right here. Now, once we know what that length is, we can double it because it's a turned part. So we have a center line now we have to worry about. So once we know that length, we can double it and then add one inch. So one inch is the length of the smaller section there where the taper starts. And by doing this simple calculation, we can work out what that major diameter is at the end of um, our taper there. And the same as the back. With 45 degrees, it's much easier. We won't need to use trigonometry for this. I'll be showing you some tricks on how we can calculate that without using trig. Now, if you want to know more about G-Code programming, pop over to my website at gcodetutor.com where I have a full course bundle that will teach you G-Code from beginner to advanced on both milling and turning. And I also have some maths lessons over there, some computer aided design and lots of other stuff, plus lots of free articles. So it's worth popping over and having a look.